All right, so the idea here is to go all the way around the circle. We're going to start with a web page. We're going to deconstruct that web page, not so dissimilar to what I just did with Slashdot, but we're actually going to do the work and we're going to create an instance from it. Then after creating the instance, and that's not this week, that's going to be next week, we'll create a schema from that, from that instance. So we'll say what are the rules and how do we create a schema. And then, the thir then two weeks from now, we'll create a transform and we'll transform it back into that web page. Okay, so the first question, which, I, which I've always been asked and which I think is a really fair question is, what's the point? Why would I go through all the trouble of extracting an XML file from a web page only in the end to recreate that web page? Right, so I want to deal with that right off the bat. And the answer to that question is, the point is not to recreate the web page. The, the recreating the web page is just kind of taking the exercise to a conclusion. Once we have the information in an XML file, we can do whatever we want, including not creating any web pages at all. Maybe we want to create printed materials from this. Maybe we want to, we want to do an RSS feed and feed it out to all of our associates. Once it's in an XML file, we have the ability to go anywhere with it. We're going to go right back to the HTML page that we started with only to kind of complete the cycle for you so that you can see exactly um, how you create web pages. Okay, so that's thing number one. Um, and that's the, the most, that's the, the, um, that's the biggest piece of the puzzle. Um, there's a lot of text in here that's kind of to, um, to orient you to the exercise and give you some background material. Um, you, I'll leave that to you to read. But what I want to do is focus on the major aspects of the, um, of the exercise. Uh, let's see. So the first thing, uh, let's see. Where we want to start here is with the page that we're going to model. And hold on a second because I need to plug my computer in before it runs out of juice. Right now on this page, what just happened? Oh. Right now on this page, um, for the first part of the exercise that's due in a couple of days, there's a um, uh, there's a uh, there's already a demo, but I think I'll replace it with this demo because this one is more specific to the exercise. Okay, so let's start from um, this. This is the file. So I want to go over also how you deal with these kinds of files, um, with any file basically that you download because I've had a lot of questions. Um, and the questions usually go something like, well, I opened it and I just got a, like a blank web page or something like that. You don't really want to open these files. You want to download them right? so that you have them, you can come back to them. So when I click on this file, instead of saying open, I'm going to say save. And I'm going to establish some, some folder on my, on my computer where I put all this stuff. Right, so that I can come back to it. And so I don't always have to find the page on the website in order to find the file. So all the files are named differently, so it's OK to put them all in the same place. This one's called Simple BC Resort HTM. And now I still have the possibility of opening it after I download it. Okay, at least I do in, um, uh, in IE when it does it. <laughs> Did it? That's weird. It didn't actually open it, even though it said it was going to open it. But that's OK. I can now go to my hard drive, go to the directory where it is, click it, and there it is. OK? So this is the page that you're going to be working from. You're going to extract an instance from this page. You're going to create a schema that guides that instance. And then you're going to turn around and create a transform that recreates this page. And in the end, you'll have a page that looks exactly like this, only it will be one you created. And if you don't like the way it looks, you can change it. Right? You can change your transformer. It'll be a different web page. OK, so what gives you the indication? Let's play the little exercise of information types. What gives you the indication that there is an information type on this page? Huh? Repetition. Repetition, right? Got one, two, three. And what's it a repetition of? What's a word that you might use to describe those things? Locations is a possibility. Can we be more specific than location? What are these things? Right, these are ski resorts, right? So I might imagine that I have an information type called resort. Now, does it have to be called resort? Could it be a location? You bet. It could be anything you want, except for one thing. In this course, you'll always know beforehand what you're aiming for. So if we go back over to the course web page, you'll see that I actually give you all the names that you need to use. 
Okay, so what this exercise really is, is it's kind of a puzzle. Here's all the names. How do you fit them all together in order to get to the result of something that models that page? Are these the only possible choices for those names? Absolutely not. But I want everybody to be working from the same set of names so that, for one thing, you can compare your work to other people. And for another thing, I can tell if you got there or not. If everybody chose their own name, like somebody chose resort and somebody else chose location, it would be kind of hard to know, did you get the concept or not? So we're always going to do the, we're always going to work in this way where you kind of know what you're aiming for. And in fact, it makes it kind of a puzzle. How do all of these words work together in some sort of parent and child relationship in order to model that information type? Okay, so just by looking at the names, you can probably give me some ideas. Like, what do you think this ADS models? Ads, right? What do you think the child of ads is in the schema or in the instance? Ad, right? So just like a puzzle, this is like when you found the, the corner of the puzzle, right? And you got all these four or five pieces that fit together, but you don't know where exactly it goes in the puzzle. So right now, it's pretty easy to see that ads and ad fit together. But where do ads and ad go, that's a question to be answered. Similarly, we have resorts and resort, right? OK, so let's go back to the page and look again at this page. And you give me some ideas of some other things that we probably have in a resort. Resorts have a what? Description. A title, right? Good. Resorts have a description. description. Good. Resorts have a link. link, right? I see that very clearly. Title, description, link. And lo and behold, when I go back here, I see link, description, and title. OK, so far so good? OK, but then I see some other ones, like um, add and ads. And I'm going to go look for those on this web page. And where do I see ads? Right over here, right? And what would you say ads have? Titles, descriptions, and links, right? So, but I don't have in this list of elements here. I don't have links twice. I don't have um, I don't have link twice. I don't have title twice. I don't have um, description twice. I have it only once. So what is that? What word is popping into your mind there? Global, right? Because I'm using a title in two different places in my schema, I'm probably going to want to think about globalness. OK, so far so good? OK, so how will I actually go about doing this? Oh, and by the way, I have one attribute. What's that attribute called? And where would an ID belong, probably, maybe? Why? Because you need a way to point to that resort specifically that is um, consistent and unique. Good. That's a really good way to think about it, yeah. You can also put it with add. Pardon me? You can also put it with add. Uh huh. And if I put it in with, with resort, then I can't put it in add, right? Because it's used up. You can make it a global attribute. Oh, right. Right, thanks. I didn't think of that. <laughs> <laughs> right? You get the idea? Tags do not get used up. I can make it global and I can use it as many times as I want. So as you, as you appropriately say, I want to give all of my major information items an ID so that I can locate them, so that I can reference them, so that I can know who they are. And I'm not going to use the title to do that because the title is really transient. The title could change. But once I assign an ID, I'm never going to change that ID, as you've probably heard about in some of the lectures. OK, so um, uh, what else was I going to ask about that? Oh, yeah. Another way to think about the ID and the title, by the way, is there's kind of a minimum number of children that any information type is going to have. And what would you say the absolute minimum is? You really can't get away without it. Two. Two. And what are they? Title and ID. Title and ID. Right? Think about it. If I have an ID, then that information item can always be found. If I have a title, then a human being can always relate to it. And that's why title and ID often are confused. They're both ways of identifying the thing, right? The ID identifies it for the computer. The title identifies it for the human. Right? And I want to have a unique ID so that the computer can always, always find it. And then humans can deal more with the ambiguity. If I have two items that are named in similar ways, or even if they have the same name, I can deal with it. I can see more of the context. And, and that can help me differentiate those two. But computers are not nearly that smart. They're going to need something concrete and simple to make sure that you can always differentiate one item from another. 